Come take my hand and see the world around you. The time is right, just let the light surround you. And step by step, you feel it coming alive. The feeling deep down inside. The best memories are made when you take the road less traveled. Visit wanderingbutnotlost.com for some inspiration. Today on Wanderings In, we are going back to Sequoia National Park in the beautiful Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, my sweet pea and I had reservations actually to go up prior to Thanksgiving to stay for four days. We were gonna take a little trip up to the mountains where it was less crowded and we could be outside as opposed to our normal New York City trip that we take during Thanksgiving. Uh, but we decided that um, it was, I don't, we are very, we have been staying home since March, really, really and truly. And I mean, we we literally will go out maybe and get groceries if we don't order them in. We've been to a restaurant twice and sat outside. I just find it a little bit creepy, so I don't do it. So that's just my thing. But um, we decided, even because we canceled our trip to Sequoia, we th got you know, we got a burr in our bonnet, right, to get up to the Sierra because we haven't been wandering for almost a year now. It's crazy for us. I'm sure, it's crazy for everybody not be able to get out and do what they usually like to do. But it's been particularly hard for me because I love and my and my sweet pea does too to get up and go, and we love Sequoia National Park because it's beautiful. Uh, undescribable unless you've actually been there and it's relatively close to Southern California. So or it's a, it's a good uh, um, trip. We decided to make it a day trip, which very few people probably do that live in Anaheim. But so we got up at 530 in the morning, jumped in the car, got our provisions, drove up uh, the uh, Golden State Freeway to the 99 to the 178 through Visalia and then up to Sequoia National Park. It was an incredible drive. We enjoyed that. And uh, then we got up to Sequoia and it was just like, I swear, we talk about this all the time, Jen O'Brien, you, you get up into the mountains and you can just feel your whole body relaxing. It's like a one huge collective exhale, uh, you know, in the car. And it absolutely is incredible. You have been up to Sequoia with uh, Laura and I, and we talked about you a lot while we were up there um, because you are a tree fan. And uh, if you're a tree fan, there is no better way to go. Right. I might have liked it more than Yosemite, perhaps. I yeah. Know. You know what? I, I really I, I can't. I'll never say that because Yosemite really is my uh, uh, my Xanadu. But at the same time, I'm going to tell you, I love Sequoia. I feel the same way about Zion, too. Um, those parks call me. They really do. And those Sequoia trees. Unbelievable. So we didn't know what to expect when we went up there because of what, you know, of what was going on. And we didn't know if there were going to be a lot of people. All of the visitor centers at the um, parks, the the, the museum-y parts of the museum, of the uh, visitor centers are closed. The visitor centers are actually open. Uh, so you can actually go in and talk to a ranger. Now, they do just like they do at any supermarket or anything around where you live, probably. You, they only let a certain amount of people inside. You queue up outside of the visitor center, socially distanced. Everyone's wearing a mask, and you go on in, and you can shop. You guys have masks. Sorry. What? It's noticed. Yeah. How yeah, long have they had masks on? Pinky and the brain have been masked up since March. They are, they don't mess around, you know. I can't believe I haven't seen that. Sorry. These guys. Sorry. So, so anyway, you can still get a little bit of the national park experience, but I'll tell you, it was a little bit strange. We didn't know what to expect when we got up there as far as people actually being masked up. And, you know, when you're outside like that, and you, especially as if you will listen to our show, you know, you know, I always say, where the most popular places are, there's a lot of people, but get 50 feet off the, you know, out of that area and there's nobody around. So mm -hmm. uh, we just didn't know what to expect. Well, the General Sherman tree, and Jan, I'm sure you remember this. They have that big parking lot up the hill and you walk down that path down to the tree itself. And there's a lot of stairs and it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, a little hard on the knees on the way down, but it makes you huff and puff on the way up. And we were even thinking before we went up there, if there's a lot of people, do we want to do that trail? Because talk about experience you know, spewing, you know, droplets <laughs> for crying out loud. If people aren't masked up. That's a little, and then, you know, it's just, it's a small trail. So if it's busy, you can't socially distance. Right. So anyway, we got up there and there were more people up there than we thought there were going to be. We were a little surprised actually. I now, yeah, pardon me. Feel cooped up. They want to get out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, and that particular trail is the most popular one right there in, um, 
in Sequoia because you get to see the General Sherman tree, which is the largest living thing on earth. Amazing. Incredible. And then there's the Congress trail there, which is one of our favorite things. Yeah. The Congress trail is fantastic. And all of the giant forests is in this thing. Where you see the Senate and the trees. Yeah, and the exactly. Trees there um, so, so we got out of the car and we were walking towards the, you know, the trailhead and every single person was wearing a mask. And I just thought it was, it was so cool. It was just cool. There's a really cool sign that the National Park Service had up that had a bear on it with a mask on and it talked about <laughs> how. And I'll, there's pictures in the show note of, of that, along with other things from our, our trip that day. But there, you know, it said, you will not be able to socially distance on this trail. It is mandatory that you wear a mask. Please take this trail at your own risk. So I thought that was very interesting, you know, so, you know, National Park Service taking this whole thing very, very uh, seriously. And I, I really, the whole time we were out there on that trail, we might have seen maybe one person or two people that weren't really complying, but everybody else was. And it was just, I don't know, it just felt, I, I'll tell you what it felt like. Everything you're hearing on the news and everything you see about all of the, how people are reacting to COVID, our experience up there just was not like that. And it was kind of reassuring. It's like everyone was there to enjoy the enjoy nature, but everyone was also there to, to protect themselves and people around them. And I thought yeah. that there was caring at the same time. So, and that might just be people that like nature. Maybe that's just part of their DNA. I think that's the deal. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Sequoia, you know, we've done a lot of talking about Sequoia in the past, and I'll put some links to some previous uh, shows we've talked about. It. We've done wintertime in Sequoia. Great uh, notes from when Jan and uh, uh, Sweet Pea and I went up there. Great pictures from that trip, which was fantastic. It's so interesting to go to these places during different times of the year. They had a snowfall up there about three weeks ago, and um, a lot of the things had closed. I don't think they knew exactly what was going to happen with the weather, but everything had kind of opened back up again. By the, I mean, as far as the roads and everything uh, when we were there. But that snowpack and it getting colder at night has really changed the the look and feel of the, the park. You would, of course, you'd recognize it, Jan, but, but when we were there, uh, in the summertime, it was so green and all the ferns, and wildflowers, and every—I mean, it just almost hurt your eyes. It was so beautiful, right? So stunning. Now it's a little bit more. Now it's—it's it's not even like uh, brown. It is—it looks like it has been in in the frost, right? It's it has already had a snow covering, right? So it's all very brown. No matter what you juxtapose next to the beautiful color of those sequoia trees, it, those yeah, trees gorgeous. still stand out like, oh my lord unbelievable how so, long did you stay there i mean it's a good that was a good what four or five hour drive yeah it was about four hour drive for us uh from where we how long did you stay? maybe a little bit more we you know we stopped a couple times on the way up you know just to use the restroom and stuff like that we had all of our provisions that we were going to use in a backpack not to leave in the car because there's bears up there you can't leave stuff in your car so um we put on our backpack, packed a little lunch. We ate out in the giant forest, which was awesome. Uh, we got up to Sequoia about 1030 nice. and we figured that we wanted to leave around three because we didn't wow. want to be driving down that hill yeah. in, you know, in when it gets dusk, because I hate driving in dusk anyway, because it's a horrible time to see. Yeah. Uh, so we actually ended up leaving about 330. So we were up there for That's what? Five, five hours. Hours to hang out and hike and do oh. that. It, it was a fun, but you guys like the drive, so the drive was part of the journey. It wasn't that like, exactly. we have a four and four hour, eight hour drive around. The drive is always a part of our journey, so you're at, you're absolutely right there. So yeah, so we had a great full day. So we were up in the 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 sequoias for about five hours, had a wonderful drive home. Visalia is a great little town there, right on the ninety nine. Uh, they they deck the halls at Christmas time uh, with old fashioned kind of small. Right. Christmas decorations and they it's not like there's three garlands no their main street is called Cane and Cane Lane and the whole thing is just uh um just you know garland or garlands it's awesome and so we always love to drive through there well we got down there at five o'clock and the lights come on at 5 30 so we went over we thought let's get an in and out burger so we went over to in and out which took about 20 minutes because you know how the line at in and out Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. and by the time we got our food we had our little drive-through meal driving down candy cane lane in visalia so it was an awesome little experience got on the 99 we got home about nine o'clock so it was a uh, wonderful day trip to uh the national park i it could talk about rejuvenating you and making you feel like literally when we got up the next day and yes, the days passed closer to Thanksgiving, we were like, God, it felt like, you know, that we were there more than just five hours, you know? So just a little bit of wandering can go a long, long way. Wow. And honestly, I have to just point out again, if you're listening, you're going to have to go to the uh, video 
to be able to see this over on YouTube. But Matt, I can see some of your decorations, so I'm going to point out. <laughs> I love the Santa up on the wall. I don't know what that Santa. Um, it's Santa's. It's a Santa's village pennant. A pennant. Okay, I love that. And then, of course, I can see my favorite thing, which is the Rudolph villain, Rudolph characters over here. Okay, so I can see uh, yeah. Island of Mystery. Charlie Mystic. in the box. I see Charlie. I see Yukon Cornelius. Yukon and um, Den the um, Dennis, right? Isn't he? Hermie. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's his name? Herm Hermie. Hermie. Yeah. Hermie. Hmm. The Dennis. Yes. The Dennis Elf. Okay, so. anyway, just wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and that's just like one. Oh, and there's a couple other things up there. And this is just in one little tiny square of your office. So yeah. I can imagine what the rest of your house is. Hey, you know, we're, we're decked. Our halls are decked this year. So good job. Makes us smile. Anyway, I, people, you know, as always, you need to get up and get out. You can do it. You know, I, as it turned out, it's a good thing we canceled our reservation because the Wuxachi closed. Uh, uh, because of the uh, rise in COVID cases, mm. our reservation would have been canceled anyway. Uh, so it was better that we did it as opposed to getting that message saying, hey, you're not coming up. You know, that wow. would have been kind of a bummer. So uh, if you have reservations up there uh, in any of the national parks, you should definitely stay on it, keep calling, and think because things are changing on a daily and weekly basis, especially since things have gotten so crazy right now with COVID. So anyway, guys, get up, get out, and uh, it, it will be able to. COVID style. Exactly, yeah. The COVID edition of Getting Up and Getting Out. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube.